All right, welcome back, welcome back to Greenbox Gaming plays Delta Green and Possible Landscapes. My name is Joe. I will be your handler for this operation, and I am joined by my team of players who are playing our operatives. I'm joined by Brad playing Hank, Hank Ellis, U.S. Marshal. Hello. I'm joined by... Uh, John playing Benedict, newspaper editor. Uh, bonjour. Um, British newspaper editor, might I add, John, if we've forgotten oh. um, our, our accent that bad. Hey, he dabbles. He dabbles in French. Okay, that's fair. And then lastly, uh, Dace playing Benji, the blues historian. Mm, have you seen it? <laughs> Have you seen it? Bob that. I've noticed you've changed our titles from my friends to my team of players, Joe. Wow. Um, well, Jeez. I... Ooh. Is this how we get the news? Yeah. Um, Fuck. I did not want this to come out this way. Um, you get one Patreon subscriber and it just goes to your fucking head. Changed, it, goes man. To it changed head. you. Since that the day, money you, has changed me. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's the thing, guys. It's changed us. Uh, Are we M team and there's another team out there, Joe? Yeah, by the way, I'm, I'm, I'm running a different cell through this uh, whole game. <laughs> yeah, well, um, how, are you, how are you guys doing? Are you guys feeling about things so far? Uh... It seems our original goals to be superheroes and rescue the damsel and come out killing the bad guy is not gonna possibly not happen. You, you, don't, you don't think that's that's gonna happen anymore? And we lost Ham. You lost you lost what? Ham. Ham's gone. Oh, the dog. Oh, yeah, okay. Abraham. Yeah. yeah, we did we did lose Abraham. Oh, pissy ham. <laughs> yeah, Pissing, just... biting ham. That's how I used to remember him. Pissing, biting ham. Yeah. He's the only one that's going to survive. Ordeal. He will outlive us all. Probably. I'm going to be frank with you. Um, I don't know what's happening. <laughs> like, I, I know, know like doing. last time, like Dace, you had said something about that. You kind of mentioned that you kind of had a difference. That something was said when in your conversation with Marcus, where you kind of have a different idea of what is at stake here now. Yeah. Seems like uh, higher stakes, both in, in the containment of the situation in McAllister and like our lives. If we get too close to this operation, then apparently Delta Green is just going to off us. Yeah. yeah it's... This has been kind of slipping into my real life, Joe. I forgot about this oh. stuff just now. Uh oh. <laughs> sort of. It was kind of weird. Um, I was at this the sandwich shop in town, and this old like the twenties music that you have playing. You know, when we go to the night yeah. floors, some old music started playing. Just like that, I was like, "Well, how do I know this? This is weird. I don't listen to twenties." <laughs> and another track on one. I was like, "This is so familiar." And I was sitting there with Mary. And I was like, "This is so familiar," but then one came up. Uh, that. Hack them up, slashing up, blah blah blah. I was like, oh, someone's playing the Fallout soundtrack. Oh, <laughs> oh okay. <laughs> that old timey shit. Yeah, dude. That yeah, which the... Fallout was it? Fallout New Vegas that had Big Iron. Yeah. That's what whatever. a banger. You know the one where it's like he's hacking up. Hacking he's hacking up, and slashing, slashing and whacking. <laughs> he's hacking <laughs> and slashing and whacking. I think that was the newest one. Uh, yeah, they were playing in, uh, that. That was in Fallout Four, I think. Yeah. 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 So that happened. I thought I was in the night floors for a second. Yeah. I don't know. It's like, do you guys consume any, like, um, I don't know, like Lovecraftian, you know, kind of like a psychological horror kind of stuff in your day to day that's seeped in or that's kind of made things a little creepier for you? Absolutely. You yeah, made me watch uh, Guillermo del Toro's uh, series on Netflix. That has etched itself into my how brain now. was it? My God. Amazing and awful at the same time. Right. 
but all for the right reasons. Some of them are markedly better than others. Some of yeah. the individual yeah. ones. Um, yeah. What was this one called? It's a Cabinet of Curiosities. Oh, yeah, you said those before. Oh, by the way, I wanted to ask you guys about... So, you know, my wife, you know, she... God bless her. Like, she sees, like, weird psychological Cthulhu and horror stuff and goes... And then it's like, hey, we should watch this. I think you'll like it. And I was like, no. why, why will I like it? She'll like, oh, you'll like it. And then, like, we start watching stuff, and then 30 minutes in, when it starts to get a little weird, I'm, my, my eyes light up. I'm like, oh, oh, I know what's happening. <laughs> yeah. But I we, think I talked about... Go ahead. Well, she, we, she's like, have you ever watched Cabin in the Woods? I was like, no, I have not. Mm. Oh, fantastic. And mm -hmm. we started watching it, and I'm like... That's All right, great. there's some government conspiracy. They're in some bunker, and then when they like went through the tunnel, and you saw the shimmer, or the bird hits the shield. I'm sorry, spoilers, spoilers for anyone. Spoilers. Yeah, who you seen. fucking spoilers. Spoilers for anyone to who's seen. Uh, four minutes thirty-two. Woods. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um. For but yeah, like when the bird hits the shield, and I was like, <gasps> like she looks over, and I just have this look of childlike glee on my face, like, <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> it's not it's just spooky. a cabin. It's, it's not just a cabin. <laughs> Dude, the, one of my favorite things about that movie was like when a major spoilers when everything cracks open and like you see all the monsters contained. Right. I could mm. I could have used like two more hours of that movie just like looking at the fucking monsters. Yeah. yeah. The character design on all those. Who's the director for that? Joss Whedon, right? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's like, if there was one thing I was disappointed about is at the very like this is a spoiler for I guess this is as much of a spoiler as it can be because it's literally the last shot before they roll credits was when the old ones or the ancient ones pop up and it's like a giant humanoid hand I was like oh like I was kind of expecting like tentacles and but well, that's just yeah, my that's preference <laughs> <laughs> well, it's not. It's kind of campy too, so it's not super Lovecraftian. Right, it's like has like right. a, a funny element to it. Yeah. yeah, it does take a huge turn for sure. <laughs> well, like it takes the sh like it really takes the shit out of um, you know, out of all of the, and I love how like you know it shows like the Japanese like okay if if you haven't seen this movie and you're listening to this just like <laughs> we're we're ruining it. It's all going. Um, I really love how it. It like it shows like the Japanese are doing the same thing, but it's like a traditional Japanese horror story of like the mm. weird ghost yeah, yeah, in I the classroom and stuff. And I think like yeah. the Italians had like a, basically like King Kong or something. Yes, like that. yeah. <laughs> so it's like it's really interesting. That that's like it's like oh, stuff. everyone has every individual culture has these weird, again like campy horror tropes. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Well, I definitely want to watch that now. Now there are two things for me to do today: is like play Red Alert and now um, watch Cabin in the Woods. <laughs> Dude, play some. Dude, just get on YouTube and g grab some of those Red Alert uh, um, scenes. Those F and Vs. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, just get those. All right. Well, well, back into it. Uh, last time you guys had, you know, you guys have been running down everything to Calister Building. Last time you guys got a, a call, like Dace was talking about, you guys had kind of received a call from Marcus who told you, like, hey, if this gets out, you guys are, it's a bit of a reality check that you guys are on the line here for this. Not only are you on the line, but A Cell, big Delta Green, big DG is watching. And whatever the three people that you had quote unquote saved by uh, <laughs> black bagging them um, that would be Michelle Van Fitz Jeremy and I can never remember the cable guy's name the cable David. guy David yes David Langford uh, that these three individuals had brought whatever <laughs> whatever interrogation they had been through uh, whatever debriefing had set off a number of red flags you guys went back to uh, the McAllister building. I did a little more searching. Discovered two things. A strange, uh, an old school newspaper clipping 
that you know talks a little bit more about Dara Bondi coming to New York, but then also this this piece of paper with this weird map um, that seems to describe or it's the big thing about it is one it shows this basement apparently but it seems to show uh the letterhead of it is this hotel broad albin uh broad albin broad albin broad albin what do we think broad albin broad albin broad albin okay this hotel hotel broad albin um which is kind of interesting because the letter b kind of makes sense because you guys were looking for a hotel with the letter B uh, from this picture with Asa Darabondi. You guys are now at this, I think kind of at this stage where the, the question was, all right, we've gotten everything together for the FBI. We've gotten the cover story settled. What do we do now? So... Another thing... Or Handed it off. Yes, my bad. Yes, that was me saying. Um, go ahead. That was a okay, good uh, smooth segue there. <laughs> <laughs> um, yes. <laughs> another thing that just came to mind that we could do is this is a map of a basement, presumably something underground. We could go to that same site and see if there's something under the site. I just remember Joe shutting us hard down, shutting us down hard, like. Didn't he? Yeah. Wasn't he just basically like, you don't even bother? Yeah. So, yeah. I would we never might... do such a thing. Uh, it was, it was frankly, time. it was bad DMing, but it did save us some time. Yeah. So, uh... <laughs> sorry, handling. Yeah, that's that copyrighted. We wait. We're just we're oh players, god! Right? You, you've just friends. fucked us. You said DMing, and now we're owned by wizards. <laughs> Somebody comes and puts a black bag on my head. <laughs> Can we request a new handler? Joe, I'd like to formally request a new handler. Um, I will... Uh, I have received your request, and I will ensure that it is processed in a timely manner. <laughs> you know, whoop! Right into the, right the file. Uh, so something we could do uh, in-game is try and investigate the basement again see if we missed anything because now we actually have cause to really look around but that might just be another dead end we did find the the canvas there yeah let's try that again call marcus give him the rundown try so to find gonna... abigail on the night floors one more time then burn everything <laughs> so you're gonna <laughs> just <laughs> drop our evidence off outside of the building and tell Marcus to come pick it up so we don't have to talk to him because fuck that guy. <laughs> well, you... I was thinking you're that in might be the we, want, we might want to give him to, though. Oh, oh! before oh. we call him, you want to go to the basement? That's what I was thinking. Okay. I think we're going to get swallowed by the basement, to be honest. <laughs> well... I get my affairs in order before we leave. That's what I'm saying. Well, fellas, it looks like we picked this room dry. What do you say? We go back to the basements, see what we can find, and call Marcus after that. That sounds like a plan. All right. All right. All right. We head to the basement. You guys head to the basement. You have to go back outside and, you know, access the, um, there's like a small staircase. As you get down there, you open the door, and uh, one thing that's immediately obvious is that you are not alone down here. Uh, previously, when you've come oh. here, and this is an area where the it seems like a lot of the tenants use it for storage, and you had actually found this painting, along with some others, in a kind of uh, a studio that looks like someone had set up down there. Um, the lights are on already when you walk down. Um, and you hear movement in the studio. Uh, hello there. Uh, any, anyone there? Hello? A head pokes out. It is none other than Thomas Manuel, the tenant who lives directly across from Abigail Wright, whom you guys had uh, managed to oh, sufficiently offend. Uh... <laughs> Uh, when you had first met with them. 
I say when you first met with him, when you first had an interaction with him. What did, what did Benji say that just like Benji. immediately soured him? I believe it was <laughs> habla ingles. <laughs> yes, it was in very poor taste. And for anyone listening God. to that, um, we're going to say that that was Benji's uh, oddness <laughs> with people and not Dace's. This reminds me of, so this is a tangent here, but my boss has this quirk. It's hilarious. So anytime he's talking to a Hispanic person, he'll speak in English, but he'll do it with a Mexican accent. Oh my so like, God. You need to borrow my truck. <laughs> <laughs> what the hell? Jeez. But he's being genuine. Like, yes. Yeah. I don't know. It makes me laugh every single time. I, mean, right, you, so I think Benji, uh, Benji should take the lead on this one. In that way. I think Benji's done enough. <laughs> um, oh. Manuel, Manuel, that's who you said. Yes. Whoa, is it isn't Manuel. What are you doing down here so late at night? He sees you guys. He's like, he's like, I thought you guys were done with this place, and he just pulls his head back in like he doesn't answer your question let's go see what he's up to I think you you walk around the corner I mean he's not hiding he's not you know like the door's open he's standing in the middle of the um of the studio um and he has a pallet of paint sitting on a stool and he is standing there with a paintbrush and he's you know he's got his sleeves rolled up and he's got paint on him and he seems to be in the early stages of painting something. What it is? It's hard to tell you. It's like he's just starting. Hmm. We're not quite done with this place. There's still a missing tenant after all. Wait, you wait. You say what to him? There's still a missing tenant. Yeah, he's like, he's like uh, well, I can't stop my work. Uh, because you guys can't seem to find Abby. And he just keeps... Keeps painting. I can tell by that response, you two were very close. Um, <laughs> is, <laughs> uh, is, is there any more paintings added to the pile? Doesn't look like it. Well, let's... Maybe do a search, see if there's anything we missed. Okay. Yeah. I guess we'll just ignore him just the same and search. Yep. Damn, fumble. Ooh, that's 77 a 77. Yeah, failures across the board with a fumble. Um, Hank, as you're like kind of looking for something, you trip over, like there's a bucket of paint on the floor you trip over it and stumble <laughs> into the easel and knock the canvas that he's currently working on off into the floor oh. and oh. and he does that thing like he was like just about he was bringing the brush to the canvas and then it oh. disappears it falls from in front of him and he just freezes there and oh his head God. slowly turns to you and he's like are you fucking with me <laughs> Manuel, you... I'm very sorry for this, uh, but frankly, this is a crime scene. Manuel I mean, is my here. last name. My name is Thomas. Can I call you Tommy? Frankly, you should no! be painted. No, you cannot. <laughs> <laughs> this guy fucking hates us. Uh, he's... Tommy, what do you expect? We're, look at This is a crime scene. Are you you going to paint by numbers down here. This is not a crime scene. This is my <laughs> studio. He says as he like slams the canvas. And he's like dusting off. He's like, damn it, it's, it's ruined. Never be right. Easy, now. big fella. You take it easy. We no, you take Tom. it easy. <laughs> we never saw Tom in the night floors. No. Thomas, have Since you been you upstairs? I live upstairs. No, but I mean upstairs, upstairs. 
What are you talking about? I trying to... I want to see if he, if he reveals that he knows about the knife laws as well. You know what I'm talking about. What? What are you talking about? I want to do a human to see if he understands or if he's, if he's kind of Well, he's just asking. He's just I'm asking acting. for clarification. He's like, what do you mean upstairs? I'm talking s the sixth floor. No, no, Upstairs. I've never been up there. I, 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 I can't go there. Why not? I haven't been invited. Well, seen by who? Uh, by the super. Mr. Castain? I'm gonna confuse we him. Mr. Castain, we the super? No. He's the night manager. Get the fuck out of here, alright? You're ruining everything. You're ruining my ambiance and my vibe. I mean, hell, I had these paint cans here for a reason, he says, glaring at Hank. <laughs> He's like, the feng shui is all messed up now. Why are you being so sus, Thomas? You're being awful cringe right now. <laughs> Those are words that I do not understand because they do not ha uh, they do not exist in that usage. Pop off. <laughs> <laughs> You pop up! Nar! <laughs> Nar? <laughs> he, uh, he's, he's upset. He doesn't seem... He's like... He goes, he's like... He's, he's like trying to shoo you guys out. He's like, I have work to do. Just go. Just go. You're ruining everything. All right, we'll, we'll go in a second, but... Do you know if there's any other way that we can get outside? Perhaps to another basement or... Um... Are there any other entrances in this basement? You know what I'm talking about. Don't even ask. No, stupid no, it's like, there's, what are you talking about? No, the basement's not. A, it's not attached to the night floor. Just, just, just go. Fine. But we're sorry like, to disturb you. He's just acting all casual about an alternate dimension. Yeah. Okay. Well, that's been your experience with the others as well. Is that this? It seems to be to them to be normal. At night. Well, except for Roger, a shifty fucker. A shifty fucker. Mm. Uh, well, he'll, he'll, be, he'll be the first one we black bag at the end of this, so... Um. Uh, actually, um, Thomas, I, we picked up... Your painting seemed to have been... I don't know if it's your painting, but I assume it may be your painting, but there was just a blank canvas that somebody picked up upstairs. I saw it had been Did moved. you take that? Um, no, we, we found it upstairs. Uh, we were going to try and return it up to the night floors. But no, no, that is yours. that is mine. It's, uh, it looked unused. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure that's what it looks like to you. Yeah. How, how, how can you... How do I see this painting properly? I'm, I'm, I don't know if you know this, Thomas. We haven't... We maybe got off on the wrong fit. The foot, but um, but I'm I'm kind of a purveyor of art myself. Uh, I, I do enjoy art, and I really would love to see how your art resonates with my soul. Is there? Am I missing something? Yes, Roll. you are missing something because you're an asshole. Can you help bring me my fucking <laughs> painting back? Such a long shot. The ball is on the sky. Right. <laughs> <laughs> you get the impression that Thomas. That your uh, <laughs> that your uh, rapport with Thomas is uh, it's not going to be rebuilt in a day. That's for fucking sure. Oh. oh no, Thomas! I actually just remembered we had to check in your painting as evidence, my friend. No, you fucking didn't. I I'm so sorry. I actually misspoke. It's it's up in evidence. It's out of our hands. It's not evidence. Says who? I oh, fuck. He just like. He just sits on the stool and puts his face in his hands. He's like, just get the fuck out of my studio. <laughs> if you can help me convince the guys in evidence that this is not just some weird blank canvas and to show them that this is somebody's piece of art, I can probably get it back for you. They, I can't. Sh I can't show it. You have to see it. If you don't see it already, then you're not going to see it, okay? Listen, Thomas. Uh, how about you scratch our back and we scratch yours? We've been to the night floors. You can follow us there in just a moment. 
I don't need to go to the night floors right now. I am painting in my studio. Which I usually do alone. You should put a lock on this door. It, no. He's just, you, you tell the guy, he's just <laughs> fuming. He's just, just fucking. We should be. He's like, I'm gonna have fun living in your head rent free. Let's <laughs> roll out, boys. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, so you guys leave. That went well. Down. Yeah. That went well. Um, we right. didn't end up in a fight. We didn't end up in a physical altercation. That went perfectly well. Um, well, so... Call Marcus. Okay, you are able to... Are you going to, like, try to call him on his phone or something? I guess. Yeah, I guess. Okay. I mean, if everybody's Agent. cool with leaving the... Well, yeah, like, you guys can go to the... There's a, a payphone just down the block. You guys can all, all like, cram into the, the phone booth together mm -hmm. um, and close the little door behind you. I'm, nice. And uh, so you all squeeze in there, and you call, and, and Marcus picks up the phone immediately. Hello, hello. Uh, uh, Marcus, we got uh, the items we discussed earlier. We uh, trust that you will meet us at the location as discussed earlier. Um, yeah, I can. Uh, I can meet you there with the um, with, with the FBI crew to to pick up the cataloging. Um, oh. I, they're what? not going to come in or anything. They're just going to, they can just pick it up. Um, all right. Is, and there's nothing in that. Let's keep in mind that we're on a, you know, that we're on an open line here. Is there anything in that catalog that is sensitive in nature? Right. I think that was the plan that we were just going to put general evidence and not supernatural or what we think to be supernatural stuff in there uh you can you tell can be the assured, difference. marcus that that is the case all right all right um i can be there in the morning uh the i mean these guys are already looking for this like monday morning would be great be great time to to really to really kind of uh, uh finish this whole thing up um and uh all right but I need to know our, uh, you know, just, there's anything that's sensitive is going to be, um, you know, compartmentalized appropriately. It's going to be, uh, destroyed in accordance to policy, right? We are, uh, formulating a plan as we speak, but you can be assured by morning we will have one, Marcus, and... Such items will be taken care of. All right, that's good. Uh, all right, I'm gonna I'm gonna make some calls. Hopefully, I can get this ball rolling tonight. And uh, like I said, and get you meet you guys out there. Say one o'clock tomorrow afternoon. Sure. All right. Um. And you're okay. Uh, good night. Are you sure you don't have anything else? Uh, no, sweet dreams. Oh, night night. Okay, night night. I love it. I love you too. <laughs> no, you hang up. That's just, uh, fellas. That's just a. Uh, that's pretty weird. Talk that we do at the uh, at the marshal's office. <laughs> <laughs> um. So yeah, are we on board I'm going to the night floors one more time? I guess Hank kind of sees this as the last hoorah to find her. Let's and, dig it, dig it. <laughs> and is everybody cool with just like seriously arresting these people and burning this place down? Well, it's it's a good question because like how are you going to And this is something to consider. Do you want these people arrested? Well, I guess should we black bag them all? The first thing that came to my mind was frame them as they burnt down the building, get the evidence, ev evidence that's mundane and shimmy them into like a black bag situation uh, because they're criminals now. Okay. That would be wild. That seems All the tenants came together 
and <laughs> conspired to burn down the, the the building that they live in. Yep. I don't. I don't think we <laughs> can the trust like them. No, we've we we had so many bad interactions with each of them poking around as an agency that shouldn't exist. Like they need to disappear. Yeah. That is I mean, that is worth think... noting that you as individuals kind of had yeah. pretty negative interactions with Roger and Thomas for sure. Like they're going to tell people about you if they have the opportunity. And the thing is yeah. is you guys have these FBI credentials but they are not perfect. Right. Benji um, feels the cold weight of the shotgun under his trench coat <laughs> and has a flashback of bloody red hands. Well, that is an option. <laughs> Benji, I don't... Uh, hopefully you're not thinking of outright murder. Of these oh, shit, did I say that out loud? <laughs> <laughs> well, I just saw you staring at your hands, and I'll, I normally know what that means with you. I saw you doing that thing with your hands where you're like... Oh. <laughs> No, right. we, we could find a way to resolve this situation diplomatically, I think. We just got to put our brains together and, and give it a good what for. But let's let's try to find old Gale before we do anything. We don't know what we don't know. Let's get in there and poke around. All right, so you guys are going to go right. back into the night floors. Into the night. I guess so. I mean, can't think of anything else. All right. How are you going to get there? Try the same door. We're talking about the, the door at the very or, top? Or uh, oh, the shelter? Yeah. Right. Which one do we want to do? That's a good question. Did it really matter last time? Yeah, didn't well, the one take us into the weird corridors? And the other one took us somewhere a little oh, bit more direct? Yeah, the one in uh, Michelle's room, I think, led us to Castane. I wonder if there are any other entrances. Um in the McAllister building. Where's that old map? It's over to the left side. I don't know. I think we should just go with what we know. If we start exploring again. Ground floor, man with briefcase and white shoes who we haven't seen yet. Roses and butter we found. I don't know if we knew what exactly that had to do with. Door on 712. Don't know if... We know what exactly that is. Night floors, Mr. Castain, the parlor, been there. Did you guys see dead guy in mask? All things, you know, considering that we found these new masks. You know, somebody dead else guy in mask. Found. I've never seen that. Dead guy in mask. I have never seen that either. Wow. But we've been in that corridor. I mean, we've been to the night floors through that, assuming that that's. It's like a label that's kind of could be in the apartment or in the night floors. Right. I say we just go back through Michelle's apartment. That's okay. that's probably what Benedict would want to do. Benji's okay. down for that. Sounds good. All right. You enter into Michelle's apartment, and much as it was last time you here at night, the um. The small New York apartment is significantly expanded. There's a large burning fire in the hearth. Um, the fire now appears to be burning like very, very low. Um, it's getting a, it's actually a little chilly, a little odd in here now. Um, and you guys look, you know, into the other connecting rooms that stretch out into these libraries that Michelle Van Fitz's apartment has expanded into. And then you'll see the large oak door that you know is the entrance into the night floors proper. Let's go in. You enter in and you are greeted by the light and sounds that typifies the night floors. Beep, beep, beep. There we go. Um, you guys have entered back in and as you are looking around you hear something you hear something scratching uh right around the corner and just as you were about to consider whether or not to head down that way you see a familiar 
little black nose peek around the corner. A, sn Ham? a snoot! <laughs> that you, Ham? Abraham comes bounding out toward you, Benji. <laughs> oh, bring it in, buddy. Come here for cuddles. <laughs> he runs up, and you know, you're like, you crouch down, and he just like kind of barrels into you. And he's. He's wagging his tail. He's excited to see you. Oh, who's a good boy? It's you, Ham. You're the good boy. <laughs> uh, Benji, I would recommend not getting too attached to uh, <laughs> Abraham given our mission. Uh, given no, no particular reason. Look me in the eyes, Ham. I love you. I love you so much. He licks your face. All right, we'll cross that bridge when we get to it. Uh... <laughs> Onward. All right, who is going to be leading the way? As he's like, well, what is what is the intent here? What floor was it? We need to get to six. Six. Everybody's told us we can't get up there unless we get invited, though. Is there something we were missing about the invite? Who got invited? Abigail's the only person that has ever got you know, invited. I think we, we should go and try find ed the that weird possible psych patient from chicago he said he might be able to get us what we need or he knows a guy who can get us out so i think we yeah, need to I go and talk to ed i'm afraid that he's kind of crazy and he's just saying stuff from his past life possibly but i don't know where else we'd be going if we could find the basement the basement on the drawing yeah i think that's like i said after we dispose of this building we could try checking the spot where that uh was okay we could ask someone about that building mm -hmm. we here. could find Let's, mark yep we could try mark and ask him about that building might be a good plan of action here we go again I'll take the lead. You guys just I'll try and navigate Mark, us man. there. I mean, I'm not too fond of him uh, looking at the nudie pictures, then at us, and then back at the nudie <laughs> pictures, but he can that. contain himself. That was so weird. Is there anybody that we haven't interacted with in the night floors? I mean, if we go looking for the psych patient, we're bound to run into someone else that has been lost in here. Probably. Before we find him, we've got Lundin, Abraham's owner. The super, we haven't met the super yet. Lundin. Where are you guys going? Let's go try to find the uh, parlor. Alright, whoever's leading the way, go ahead and give me that sanity check. Jeez. I'll get that done. I'll do it. And keep in mind, uh, at least one of you, I believe, has some juice. Juice. That was Brad got the juice. Yeah, I believe his yeah. Hank has some juice, juice to use uh, to use on a roll to get a plus twenty. All right, sanity. Forty. Success. I've written down forty. Oh, I think forty I really is too do. much. I really do have forty written. Down. I think forty is too much. I'm sorry. <laughs> You're gonna change it? I d do you guys think it should be forty? It seems like it was a good catch. Uh, Come on. All right, I reserve. I smoke, do reserve so. the right to change it later at a later date. Fair enough. Oh, uh, what was that sanity roll, by the way? Uh, sanity success forty-five under fifty-six. All right. You guys are walking, and you feel like you're getting close. You feel like you're getting close. Um, but as you go, you are... You hear something. You hear something behind you, like the sound of feet running suddenly. Like, doo -doo 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 -doo. Uh, you turn around, or any of you who hear it, like you all turn around and, you know, and you just barely ca catch like the heels of someone running, you know, perpendicular to you guys, like across one of the hallways. And as you guys turn back around, you see out in front of you, you see the figure of two people running, 
like sprinting across the hallway, you know, like at a T junction. They sprint across, and then right on their heels are th- what look like three men um, wearing gas masks and holding shotguns. And they what? they they leap across, and you hear the sounds. <laughs> The sounds of shotguns being repeatedly blasted and cocked. Um, what do you do? Uh oh. I mean, a murder just happened. We got <laughs> uh, Hank. Hank pulls out his gun and tries, or his shotgun rather, and he's going to go for, to try to round the corner. Is what Hank's going to do. Back him up. Okay. This Are could you- be so. Bad. You guys know how deadly combat is at Delta Green, right? <laughs> we got no I mean, choice. Let's fucking do it. I'm down. Right. We got I, I, I do want to know though. Like, are did you guys like? Let's not meta this too hard. Did you guys just walk in carrying shotguns in your hands into the night floors? Benji's is in his trench coat. You're wearing Benji's wearing a trench coat. Yep. I'm not wearing a trench coat. Uh, I don't actually think I've got a shotgun. You probably have your I mean, sidearm. We have handguns. We have handguns. A handgun, yeah. Okay. Um, I would say, well, I wouldn't Hank have it strapped around. I mean, we are, we moved all our crap from that apartment. Right. He's probably got some other random documents on. I mean, yeah. Okay. Fair enough. Uh, so you guys are gonna, you guys are gonna go around the corner and fuck with this, or what? Guns ready, and uh, Hank's gonna yell, you know, freeze. All right, Hank, you come around the corner. And you may be like, and you guys all have some gun training. You guys have some basic combative training, like even Benji and Benedict, though that's not your professional background. And you are, you know, like you guys like kind of give each other the nod, like, you know, we're going to go, you know, three, two, one. And you spin around and hang, you say, freeze. And you see there are two bodies laying on the floor and no sign of the three men. In the gas mask. Hank said, back me up. He moves slowly. One step at a time, closer to the bodies, but obviously checking the corners and whatnot. More you've so. got the you've got your you know your guns up. Um it doesn't take much of a search for you to see something. See something a little bit odd. Um the two dead bodies air quotes they're not bodies at all they are life size like you know those i forget what they're called they're like when you know when you're like studying form and stuff like the little mannequins that you use that are like wooden Mm -hmm. and have the uh, you know have like the articulating joints and stuff they're like waifus oh wow Okay, that's an insight into Brad's life <laughs> that I was not expecting. Uh, <laughs> we're gonna swing back around to that later. Um, <laughs> Does Mary I know about your waifu? <laughs> what's the what's the body pillow situation over in? Uh... <laughs> oh man, keep that in the basement, in the basement <laughs> where, in house. where it belongs. <laughs> um. You, they're like these life-sized mannequins um, that are laying here on the ground. And what you originally looked like blood is they're, they're torn open. It, it looks like they were torn open like being shot, but actually it's like they have little places built in and there's red tissue paper like slowly falling heck? out of these compartments like they're, like they're bleeding. And they're dressed head to toe in in clothes and stuff and it is just and you smell you smell that smell of cordite in the air freshly fired guns do they have faces they don't they're like blank faces they look like they're like vaguely drawn in um and they look to be the the, with the clothes and the faces that are kind of drawn in they look to be the faces of men and the they look to be what the vaguely men i don't see the shooters no I say, what the hell? I start searching their pockets. Yeah, can um, I check for some, I don't know, occult stuff? Is there anything that I can recognize about them that's, I don't know. 
Okay. Gi- <laughs> Aside from them not being people. Give me, <laughs> besides the obvious. Uh, yeah, give hmm. me, give me like an occult. Let's see what you got. I'm just kind of curious at what you notice. What I notice? Damn. Vegas, 72. 72. 72 over 50 for me. Let us see. Let's go. Benji, occult. Success. Success. Twelve under twelve under sixty-two. Wow, you have sixty-two in a cult. Jeez. Yeah, I'm a it's cult as fuck, dude. It's kind of his jam. It's a fucking occult. You guys are looking at these things, and you know, uh, Frank uh, Hank gets down there and starts digging through their pockets, and it looks like he's gonna, he's about to find something. But you guys are looking, Benedict. You're not seeing anything particular, but Benji, as you're giving these guys a really hard look, and you kind of reach down and you pull the back of their, um, like the back of their collar down to see their like wooden mannequin bodies. You see the yellow sign carved therein, but you hear something, but that's jarring enough. I mean, but you hear something else. You hear like a, it kind of reminds you of like the sound of like a fishing rod being like reeling in line and you look up and you see strings being pulled Whoa. up into the darkness and oh, you no. realize that there is no ceiling it goes up and up and up oh, no. and up and up into the darkness these wires are being pulled reeled up <laughs> marionettes who's controlling the strings uh, Benji will pull pull on a string to see what happens. By the time you realize that they're way too out of range, like, mm. God, oh. that's trippy. Now, Hank, you pull out, um, you pull out uh, these wallets, and there each of these mannequins seems to have like one of them's wearing a watch, like you know they they have all the you know expected accoutrement, like one of them has like a pocket watch or not a pocket watch, like a pocket knife and like a bunch of change. They both have wallets. One of the wallets has uh, they have really old school looking New York uh, ID cards. One is Eric K Carter, and it appears that the card was. Issued in 1953. And the other is Ronald Burbach. That is B-U-R-B-A-C-H. Burbach. Which was issued in 1955. They have money. They have bus passes. And all this other stuff. They have even the money you know, they have in there. The dollar, the bills. Look to be old. And they're all issued, you know before this time before these the 1950s as the exact date that the newspaper about um darabondi was the building right was that when darabondi disappeared darabondi disappeared in 1950 okay oh i thought the uh newspaper was 1953 okay um hmm Uh, Hank tries to just. He already knows this is like supernatural shit. He tries to not look up at the like in. Oh, endless that's actually a really end. good point. Uh, everyone, please uh, uh, <laughs> make yeah. a quick sanity check. Thanks for that, bro. <laughs> <laughs> Success. Thank you. Forty-nine under fifty-nine. Failure for Benedict. And a crit for Benji, forty-five under f- or forty-four under forty-five. Okay, um, Benedict, go ahead and take just one sanity damage. Uh, the other two of you aren't going to take anything. I really wish I could like. The rules for Delta Green are that crits on sanity just mean you take the minimum damage. The minimum damage here is zero, but I, I like I wish there was something more. But at the same time, it's balanced that way for a reason. So. Um, mm. But yeah, so Benedict takes one sanity damage. It's just kind of the weirdness of this all sinks in. And uh, uh, so, yeah, you guys are standing here and you look up and you actually see right down in the hallway, you see the opening for the smoking lounge. 
fellas, let's not try to spend too much time here. Let's talk to Mark, get what we can. Yep, Benji, do you mention the wires yeah. to the others, or do you just keep that to yourself? Uh, probably... I'd probably keep it to myself. There's just so much weird shit going on. It's just like, you know. As you guys keep, as you guys move down the hallway, Benji, you swear that you can hear something way up high that seems to be following you. It seems to be the sound. It seems to go wherever you guys go. Okay, that I will mention. <laughs> guys, I know there's a lot of freaky shit going on, but I think we're being followed. When you two look up, you also see that there's this, it seems that the ceiling extends up just into darkness. Like the walls and the wallpaper just go up and up and up until there's just nothing left to see. And you two begin to notice as well this, that something seems, to, as you guys move around, there's just, and sometimes it's just a click or a bit of a scratch or something like that. It sounds like something is kind of following you guys this way in that. Oh my God. Are we on I strings? Are we on strings? <laughs> Benedict really I quick. It's just Benji. Like, just like fanning all over himself. <laughs> Let's try to keep it together. This is our last time in here. You just you hear um, you hear you pass a door and you hear like a, a tiny snippet from Pinocchio. I've got no strings to hold me down. <laughs> oh, that was beautiful. <laughs> Let's look in there. <laughs> Let's look in that door. Um, Sounds like there are all sorts of good stuff going on in there. All right. Do we see Mark? Um, you you enter in, and just as this happened two times previous, as you enter in, oh, you God. hear the sound of Mark coming around the corner. He comes around, head down. Uh, lighting a lighter, and he with his uh, bowler hat on, he looks up, goes, hmm, ah, gentlemen, uh, nice you to join me again. He again takes the hat off with practice precision and flips it, and it lands right on the coat rack, right on the hat rack, just as it has before, and he walks over to the wet bar. He's like, uh, can I get anything for you? Step one for me. Uh, it's, uh, uh, anything, anything particular, yeah. You want to leave it up to me? You you go crazy. Oh, Benedict is he's he's done with the situation. A risk getting to him. Uh, sure, Mark. I'll have a sarsaparilla. Um, <laughs> listen, I, I I would like to get straight to the point. Uh, we do appreciate your hospitality and everything. Uh, this might be our last time meeting, uh, talking with you. So, uh some things uh does this map uh, this building mean anything to you any hands on the hotel uh broad alvin mm. uh i mean uh i mean i don't know nothing about know much about that you know it's uh it's a it's a, it's a funny little map um <laughs> but uh, yeah i mean besides that you know i mean you never heard of the building what do you mean we mean never heard of the building. The Broad Alban. What? And he like, he he's like, that's where we are. The uh, Broad Alban. It, yeah, uh, well, I like to say a Broad Alban, but uh, <laughs> <laughs> but a Broad Alban. I mean, that's that's fine too. Yeah, I mean, that's I mean, <laughs> I mean, we're in the Hotel Broad Alban, you enormous know, ass. Like, this is where we are. <laughs> like. Uh, well, uh, news to me, um, <laughs> much appreciate that, uh, bit of information. You um, sure, you sure you should be drinking? Uh, don't, uh, Sarsaparilla's non-alcoholic, so we're all good. Oh yeah, that's right. Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, so you've never, is, so since we're in this building, you've never seen a basement? Uh, do these words, uh, are these initials WL? JL bottle mean anything? Uh, not particularly, no. It's, uh, you know, people come and go. You never seen the basement? Well, I, uh, you know, let's go ahead and make that persuade check. 
Let's see if Persuade. we can get let's see if we can get a uh, old Mark here to open up to you. Uh, you guys have been here a few times. I think Mark's taking a shine to you. <laughs> Mitz. You know, I was just I was just uh, about to tell you to take a twenty percent bonus. Wow! And so that would with a twenty, that would be forty at forty. Yes, which would be a success. Okay, just barely. He'll tell you. He'll tell you, but like, uh, hey, well, well, you know, like when I, uh, you know, when I was, uh. You fellas, when I was first, when I first came here, you know, I was, uh, I was a bit on the run. <laughs> I'm not gonna, like, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna shoot straight with you. Old Mark hadn't always been, um, involved in the most legitimate of business. Um, not that I'm not a leg legitimate businessman, but you know, I, uh, anyway, I had some, I have some G-men who, uh, who were after me yeah. there for a minute, <laughs> you know, but, uh. Uh, luckily, I found this place uh, right in the nick of time, the old Hotel Broad album. Um, and uh, I actually had to, uh, had a, a friend of mine, we were, we were both trying to, well, we, we were both on the run, and we, we did go through this, 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 uh, this, like a, a booby hatch, you know, like a, like a, a, a trap door, you know, and, uh, and we, we were in these tunnels, and, uh, yeah, you know, my, my buddy, I, I didn't see much of him after that. He, see, he found his, uh, you know, your, 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 your map there. Toss about the bottle, right? Well, he found this bottle with his name on it, right? And, uh, and to be frank, I ain't never seen him since. So, uh, eventually, though, you know, I, uh, I found my way out, um, you know, and now I'm pretty comfortable here. You know, I've got everything a man could need, right? You think you could take us to the basement? <laughs> he uh, he hands a uh, a root beer to uh, to uh, Hank and a uh, and like two fingers of fine fine whiskey to uh, uh, Bennett. He says, <laughs> "I've tried, man. I've tried. I can't find him no more." You think Mr. Castain would know how to get to the basement? He is sort of the caretaker of the building. Eh. He would. He would know, except uh, I think he's kind of in the same situation. Listen, well, I'm gonna tell you this. I've tried to find. I've tried to find the place. I can't find it. I haven't given up, but I'm comfortable right here and. If you ever find my bottle down there, you bring it to me, okay? Your bottle? So, is that the whole reason you've been trying to find the basement, is to find a bottle? Well, everybody's got a bottle. Well, Hank, that rightly doesn't make any sense to me. What? Are, we, bottle, are we talking, what kind of bottle? Like a bottle of brandy? A, a, a bottle of whatever you like, I, I, I guess. I have you know, now I think about it, I, I really hadn't really ever considered what's in it. I just, I just know, I just know I need it. Oh, mine's full of hemp milk. <laughs> You're a weird guy. <laughs> but I like you. <laughs> I get that a lot. <laughs> but he, uh, he pulls one of those, uh, navy blue, uh, Books with no writing on it, and uh, goes and flops down in that chair. Uh, not the book again. Uh, <laughs> close that thing when you're talking to us, please. Um, I don't worry about it. <laughs> he seems to hold. He holds the book up, like kind of like in his like he's comparing it to Hank. And he's like, huh? <laughs> he just... <laughs> Hank covers his privates. <laughs> Um, mm. what if so last session I can't get this out of my head in that newspaper clipping I found it said that Darabondi was inspired by his buildings from buildings that he saw in his dream 
So what if the whole night floor is, is just like somebody's dream? And what if we could become lucid? Like, what if we could lucid dream in the night floors? Like, mm -hmm. what if we just, I don't know, focus on the basement and keep the basement in our heads and just like, I can tell by Joe's smile that that's a shitty, terrible idea. And I'm a bad player and I'm sorry I for bringing it up. I have no idea what you're talking about. <laughs> The whole forget your falling type thing. Um. Well, this you is try so that, difficult. Benji, and let us know how it goes. <laughs> <laughs> Just, um, we're gonna. Do you need go. anything from us? <laughs> and uh, slightly, slightly you know, tipsy, Benedict. I've just... I've been working on this thing called manifestation, where if you just think about an idea in your head, it'll come true. And so I'm gonna think about basements so that's what i'm gonna do all right you talk uh, do, you, do you need <laughs> do you need help from us in whatever you're doing right now okay do you need uh, some hints uh, extremely hank is extremely desperate and he says uh uh did you hand me the book you want some porn not that <laughs> book. wrong book <laughs> The King oh. in Yellow book. Oh, God, you are desperate. All right. Here you go, one Leroy on John. Uh, oh, what are you doing there? What are you doing? I, I love that. Uh, what are you doing? There's got to... We, we don't need to do this. This is the only option. It obviously gave uh, Benji some kind of... Uh, well, hopefully I don't brown out. Some kind of clairvoyance <laughs> instead, maybe. Uh, you see what he's saying now? Do you really want to become this man? Is going to focus on a room to manifest it in its world. Let's be honest. He was always a little out there. That's true. Um, That's the power fair. of positive thought. <laughs> Mark, have, do you think this book would be able to help us? I mean, I mean, was it got a map in it or what? It could. Um. Look, why don't, why don't you guys just sit down, take a load off? You, you seem, every time you come in here, you just, you're stressed, you don't, you don't relax, you don't sit with old Mark, and just, uh, and just have a nice chill. We can't do that, Mark, as much as we would like to. Hey, is, there, is everything you need right here? He downs his sarsaparilla, throws it down. He <laughs> says, maybe if you two watch me. It'll ground me or something. I don't know. This is what Abigail read to get to the sixth floor. Maybe it'll something. I don't know. Oh, that ain't uh, going to help you get there. How do you know? You haven't been there. Well, well, yeah, but I, I know. I mean, just because you read it don't mean you go. <laughs> there's lots of, I mean, there's people who, there's people who read the thing. I mean, I mean, hell, I've read it, you know, I'm down. I'm right here. Join myself. I mean, uh, you know, uh, you know, Roger. Uh, oh, Roger yeah. Carloon? Yeah, yeah, he, he comes up here and hangs out with me every now and then. And, uh, fucking I mean, Roger, I, I knew mean, it. I mean, he's read it. I mean, uh, fucking Michelle. He did say he's read it. Uh, Thomas. I think even old, I think old man, I think old stick in the mud cast has got himself a copy. But what about an original? Eh, what is an original? Uh, <laughs> There's nothing new under the sun. Mm. It's, a, it's a Latin proverb, I think. Well. Uh, I think Benedict is just going to actually flop down somewhere and just tend to his drink and wait it's just he's exasperated at this point he's like mark i think i will join you for a little bit what do, what do you do here what do you do around here you just sit there looking at your smut all day <laughs> he uh, he smiles he goes huh he like he like uh motions to the cigar in his mouth to the drink in and his hand smoked. to the book <laughs> in his lap and just to the and to the lounge, and he just like like you know, points to everything. He's like, "It's everything, you everything you need." 
Bring me one of those. What if uh, I'm... Bring me one of those little sausages on the uh, on the toothpick. You turn around. There's a plate of sausages of like little little cocktail sausages. There you go. Okay, Benedict is he's gonna sit down and eat some sausages with Mark. Okay. What else is there oh to do? My God. Hank opens There's... the book. Hank opens the book and and tries to skim through it. Something. You're, are you gonna skim it? Or are you gonna read it? I'm gonna skim it for something. Uh, some map, some reference to this building, uh, something that you find nothing like is, that. Listen, Hank, you seem stressed out. What's bothering you, brother? Sit down. <laughs> sit down over here with old Mark. <laughs> I'm not going to sit on your lap for the last time. No, I don't <laughs> want you to sit on my lap. That'd be weird. Don't make it weird. <laughs> what was Ham's name? Our uh, owner's name starts with an L. Uh, Lundine. Lundine. Where can we find Lundine? Ah, he's wandering around the place. Wandering? Yeah. Nice. I mean, like I said, well, he's, what do you, he's crazy. Hank says, what do you, what do you guys think? Should we look around maybe one more time? Someone lead the way. Uh, read this book for some kind of something. It's obviously connected. Uh, or lead this joint. Well, keep in Thanks mind here, guys. Loss. Keep in mind that you have heard from, you know, that Marcus came to you guys and told you guys contain things that's your number one goal now i get that hank as a character is most interested in trying yeah. to help people i get that well that's where hank is he's leaving it up to y'all to you two he's this is his tried his hand we looked in here uh we can either do something reckless try to search one more hallway or leave and Contain it. Benji's concern is that even if we burn down the McAllister building, it's not going to completely contain the situation. Like, we have to get to Darabondi. Hmm. But I don't, I mean, it's fucking impossible, apparently. It's just not written into the module. We don't <laughs> even know where get to meet Darabondi. I mean, we know where Abigail is, and we still can't get to her. We have no idea where Darabondi is. Probably uh, with Abigail, but God, I'm so close as a player to just wanting to go nuclear. Well, but I don't yeah. even know what that would look like. Like we've been banging our heads against walls. Nuclear would be a, us all chanting uh, an entire chapter of the book King and Yellow together as we <laughs> read the book. <laughs> That's so I'm casting it over the radio. <laughs> <laughs> I think uh, Benedict is also kind of at the end of his tether. He's like sitting down there. He wants to try something. So while he's sitting there with Mark, he like grabs a cigar and he wants to try and he takes one of the smutty books and he starts playing with some fire to see if stuff burns. Uh, yeah, I mean, if you start burning one of the books, that's uh, <laughs> Mark's like, All right. it, it seems to catch Mark. It's like, he's like, Hey, careful there. That's art. Art, you say. Art, you say. <laughs> uh oh, he's got a thing with that. Don't uh, mention that, Mark. <laughs> what happens if you die on the night floors, Mark? The fuck are you talking about? The, the concept of death, the afterlife, nevermore. Why, are you asking me if I believe in heaven? The no, fuck is I'm this? No, what happens if you die here. The fu Benji, you are ruining my vibe right now, okay? <laughs> and that's not even a word where I'm from yet. And I'm that's how that's how much you're harshing on my vibe. That was pretty sus, Benji. I have to admit. <laughs> I'm sorry, I didn't mean to be so cringe. Oh <laughs> uh, god. I want to pull out my shotgun and blow Mark's fucking head off. <laughs> <laughs> but Benji wouldn't do that. No, unless... Benji wouldn't. 
well, unless under certain circumstances, but well, I, Mark, I'm not Mark, gonna. I guess I see? shouldn't tell you what Benji would do. Uh, but if you, I mean, he, just, he wouldn't. He wouldn't. No. Mark, Mark, we we asked you to look out for Dara Bondi. Did he come through since we last chatted? No, I don't believe so. God damn it. Mm. We did all we could, fellas. I mean, outside of roaming these halls forever and going insane ourselves and ended up like this sicko that looks at nudie books and asks people to sit on his lap. I say... <laughs> <laughs> I thought he said that. Maybe I made that up. This place is getting to me. Let's leave and yeah. uh, burn Mark, hell. Mark, one last question. Do you know uh, Eric Carter? Or Ronald Urbach? No, I don't believe so. All right. We'll see you later then, Mark. Sounds like a plan. If we, if we step outside the parlor, is the ceiling still gone? Uh, it looks like it's back. I, I feel just... safe already. Yeah. You should. Things are looking up, fellas. Uh, the ceiling's repaired here. itself. <laughs> Y'all just want to leave. I, that's what I think I want to do. Is black bag uh, the tenants burn the building down? Oh, this is gonna make such a mess. Well, that's what you guys are there for—is to clean up messes. Well, you just gotta figure out what we're gonna do about the tenants. We're gonna have to call Marcus and get the carpet cleaners to come. But that's how many tenants? And he had trouble with two the last time. Hell, they prob some of them are probably in here. If we burn the the Caster building, this place, they might be stuck in here. That's an interesting There's idea. A thought. If we sequester all the tenants in the night floors, and then mm. yeah, and if Thomas doesn't in. want to go in there, we can just black bag him. That would be easy enough. <laughs> That's actually, that, an amazing that would idea. be amazing that if we get the opportunity to fucking black bag Thomas. Um, well, the tenants that you have to worry about are three. You have Lewis Post, you have Roger Caroon, and Thomas Manuel. Uh, because, yeah. I'm not sure if you remember, but uh, Michelle has already been saved. Quotation marks. She's okay. so happy. Yeah, I think we do that. We try and stumble out. Do we take Ham with us, though? One thing, Joe? Yeah. I don't know if you know, but Nero8 and NeroBot are both playing. Oh, thank you for that. That could get very confusing. It makes it kind of cool. It's like an eerie background, too. Um, <laughs> yeah, that is kind of fun. So, but, um, yep, that's Hanks, unless y'all have anything else y'all want to do in here. That makes sense. Benedict will go with that because he's a little bit tipsy and exasperated. All right. Um, so once we, I mean, uh, so I guess if we're talking about bringing the tenants into the night floors, are we talking about wrestling them in here, or do we persuade them to go into the night floors? Well, What's I reckon Roger and and uh, Louis Lewis might already be in here. If we uh, we kick open the door, see if they're in the apartment. If we can find them, we tase them, uh, handcuff them, and uh, throw them in the hallway in a line. Uh, call Marcus, get rid of them. If they're not there, then they're, we assume they're in the night floors and, and burn the place down. It's a nasty business, but I think we might be out of options. Do we seal the doors somehow? Uh, do, we need to, do we need to try and keep them in or out, the doors that we find? If there are like only said, these two entrances and exits. Like I said, let's just go door to door in the apartments. <laughs> okay. Yep, let's fucking clear the building out. Alright. Who's leading? We're the taking way? ham. Say again, Joe. Who's leading the way? I guess Hank will. Let's get that sanity check. Uh failure, of course. 
95 over 59. All right, um, you guys are. Let's maybe nuke. Let's maybe nuke one of the soundtracks though. It's getting a little. Is it a bit much? <laughs> it's maybe a bit much. Okay. Uh, let me. There we go. I'm already confused by this place. Just yeah. adding to the confusion. <laughs> All right. Um. You, you guys make it. Down the hallways, you kind of go this way and that. Um, this time, as you're going, the you know, there's at least twice where you round a corner and it looks like that the hallways, which are you know, you know, pretty well appointed, typically that the paint and wallpaper is peeling back. Um, at least one hallway that you get come to like a you know a T junction, and you look down to your right and it looks like there's it kind of leads off into darkness it kind of like the lights are flashing there's a light you know probably hundreds of feet far down that's just flickering every now and then as things start to you know they're getting a little little edgier um that being said you eventually come to a fire door like an emergency you know push handle fire door that looks reminiscent of the uh, of the roof access door of the McAllister building. Okay. Well, fellas, I guess this is it. Yeah. Yep. You enter through, and um, as you go, Ham doesn't seem to want to go. He seems to be to be kind of standing at the door and whining at you as you start to leave. Benji will get down on his haunches and be like, Ham... I love you forever, my child. I can no longer look after you. You obey in my heart. Always. He licks your face and whines. Give him a gentle stroke. Even and a single, a little tear. A single tear rolls down Benji's cheek. <laughs> yeah, um Yeah, you uh you let the door close behind you and Ham's just sitting there. Um as you as the door closes and you guys are standing at the top of the staircase that goes to the roof access you you did the right thing benji all right let's go that, uh, ruin all these other people's lives yeah <laughs> let's go fuck some shit up i think benedict will try and bolt the door is there something around to to keep this thing shut um You could find something pretty easy. Um, I think it's just if you want to like go find something like a bar or something to put in the door, it would not be difficult. There's nothing around right here, but um, you also haven't put everyone in the night floors yet, so maybe. Right. I was thinking we lock up one side and uh, shuffle everybody out through Michelle's apartment. Okay. Oh, okay, we're gonna try to shuffle them into the night floors. Okay, gotcha. Yeah, I like it. Okay. All right. Um, the first room you would encounter then, um, I suppose, would be Lewis Post. Lewis Post lives on the second floor, um, directly above Abigail. All right, boys. We got a plan. Say we go fast and lethal. Well, not lethal, but um. Oh, that's a good Jesus question, Hank. actually. Are you going to just knock on the door? Or are you just going to bust in and be like, get the fuck in the night floors? <laughs> I think we bust in. Yeah. Somebody okay. have a gun. Somebody have something lethal on them. And someone else to at least try to, like, tase slash, uh, you know, handcuff him, put something over his head. Do you ha I don't know. Do we have that to standard equipment? Uh, what? Black head bags? Uh, handcuffs. Tasers. <laughs> tasers, no. Handcuffs, yes. It's 1995. Okay. Tasers aren't super common. Then I think All we right, just go in loud and fast and try and get them who in handcuffs. Hold, who wants to hold the gun and which other two want to try to well, tackle he, them, handcuff them? He's got the best firearms. Probably. I've got 20, so Hank's, not good. Yeah. I'll go. Hank, you, you handle the weapon. I will go and try and 
wrangle them up when you've got them under control. What's your okay. unarmed combat isn't terrible, but we all see we saw how that went with Michelle. Yeah. Well, so if you guys so tell me what this looks like. You guys are all standing outside of Lewis Post's room. Who's got guns out and who who's doing what? I guess Hank has the shotgun and if Damn, I don't get I guess at this point I don't think Hank doesn't really want to kill someone cold blood, but like if he starts running and he gets away, like at this point it is like kind of maybe it is kind of save New York. It's just a contingency. I'm sure we won't have not to gonna use need it. it. Nah. Right. All right I've just boys. got handcuffs. Benedict if just if has he handcuffs. starts to run away, I'm gonna fire on him. But let's try right. to Keep so them alive so they can hang us out. Yeah, you are standing at Lewis Post door. What happens? Hank. It's like one, two, three, and just bam. Tries you, to kick you down you the kick door. Kick in the door. Uh you kick in the door and Lewis Post is sitting uh in his Or no, actually hold on. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. No, actually so sorry, my bad. You, bam, open the door, and you see in the middle of the floor is that mirror that you guys broke. The mirror that you originally found in Lewis Post. And it looks like he's been jigsawing it back and forth, or back together. But I do believe Jeez. Benedict snagged a piece, a piece missing. of it. And there is a piece <laughs> missing from the middle of it. Um, that he is Probably looking. good. Probably you, good call. You kick in the door, bust through. Lewis Post is not in the apartment. Let's clear Room's the rooms. Clear, boys. Yeah, go I'll around. The next one. No, well, we go around the apartment. You know, look in his yeah. apartment. You go around the apartment. Sure He's not here. Is there only one piece missing from this mirror? Only one. <laughs> Best to keep it that way. I don't know. I think Benedict has to find out. I think Benedict. I just imagine you guys one. go over and just like flip it and flip all of the glass like out <laughs> and away again. <laughs> Be an asshole. No, the curiosity is going to get the most of him. Uh, Benedict is going to go there while we kind of searching the room, and he's going to place that last piece into the mirror. Hey, you know what to do. Ass is ass. <laughs> um, ass is ass. Uh, ice his ass. Ice. Ice his ass. Ice, ice. ass. Ass his ass. You, uh, ass is ass. you, this is... you slip the you the piece back in while the other two are, you know, and nothing seems to happen. Hank right. sees that what he's doing, and I'm like, careful, Benedict. We're almost at the end of this fucked up mystery. I just, I needed, I needed to find out. Um, he takes it back. He takes back that shard of glass. You guys are now standing outside Robert Caroon's apartment. What happens? Same procedure. All right. Let me... Kick in the door. Bam! Robert's no... Roger is nowhere to be found. Right. On to Thomas, right? Yep. Yep. Same thing. We check every room in the apartment. Um, yep. Okay. And the um, basement. Yeah, basement last. He's probably still down there. Let's see. By numbers. Uh, as you are, um, as you are about to kick in Man Thomas Manuel's door, he walks through the front of the McAllister building. Hey. We jump in. Hank turns. Hank turns and says, "Freeze on the ground." His hands go up. What the fuck? What the fuck? We go into handcuff. All right, he does not resist you. You are able to handcuff him, um, and he is—he's taught. He's yelling at you guys. He's like, he's like, I'm gonna have all of your badges. You fucking fucks. Do you have any idea who my father is? I'm gonna. And he's just like, just this same kind. Of, Hank, you've heard this a million times. This is the standard. Well, Thomas. I managed to find, I managed to see what was on your painting, and you're in for it now, man. You're in for it now. <laughs> the fuck and, are you talking Benji's, about? Benji's like, I knew you spoke English. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> Jesus. Jesus. <laughs> All right. Uh, what do you do with Thomas? We're going to force him up to Michelle's uh, apartment. All right. Um, well, maybe we should check his actual room before we, I say, leave him. 
It's a good plan. I'm bitching on the floor and let's check his room. And he is. He's sure. just he's just bitching. <laughs> um. Uh, hold on, I have to find the the place. Um. Thomas's apartment is, I mean, the austere is probably the word for it. Not a single like everything is meticulously clean, like obsessively so. There are no paintings on the wall for a painter. That's a little odd, uh, but you do know that he has a uh, a studio in the basement. Um, nothing is around, and if anything. If anything, it just looks like some type of weird, sterile place. It's just, it's really odd. Um, if you guys want to spend any time looking at something, otherwise, like, you have him handcuffed. Uh, Hank doesn't really want to, because we're going to burn the whole place down, so. Um, I say we push him into to the door that's, like, you know, from Michelle's room that goes into... The night floors, and then check the basement. You this, uh, maybe the other way around, though. Oh, you want? Oh, so we, if in case we find someone, yeah. If you guys yeah, go down basement. the basement, there's nothing there. It looks like Thomas had just finished. Probably, you know, he's probably like coming up for a break or something. It, it's still hard. It looks like he was about to draw some type of landscape or something. Um, but besides that, there's no one in the basement. Okay. All right. Let's do this. You take Thomas Can Manuel we... into Michelle's apartment, and as you go in, I mean, the place is still pretty trash. He's like, what the fuck? Where's Michelle? What the heck? What have you assholes done? <laughs> and, like... Michelle's fine. <laughs> My dear. We Trust me. <laughs> so, like, do you just, like, open the door and kick his ass through? Trust oh, yeah. me. Th yeah, I'm like, trust me, Thomas, this is much better than uh, what Michelle had. And I, we kick him into the door. But we, we're going to take him to the other side because there's like Michelle's long apartment and then there's, I guess, the entrance to the... To the night oh, floors. Right. You kick him through the door through the night floors. All right, you yeah, do yeah. so. You yeah. you kick him through and he, he comes... Is he still handcuffed? You probably leave him handcuffed, right? Yeah. <laughs> you leave him handcuffed. He stumbles through. You slam the door behind him. There's enough stuff in here for you to basically barricade the door and you think that it's going to take... It's going to take an act of Congress to get through it from the other side. Um, cool. And then I will say that cool. also, like, between having access to everyone's apartments, uh, you can definitely find a way to barricade or bar the door upstairs as well. You now have okay. an empty building. Can we do a quick yeah. search just to see if there's a sprinkler system? That won't take anything. This is an old building. No such thing exists. No sprinklers. Okay. Um... And I say we don't even bother with some evidence for the FBI. It burned down. Yeah, how can we make it look like it's not an arson? Can we start the fire? Well, see, the great thing about Delta Green is that's what the skills are for. Uh, is there an arson skill? There's a that demolitions. Um, uh, Hank has zero in demolitions. But there's other things like you can like say you want to do like Hank could use his skill in forensics to cover something up, um, mm. or like a variety of other things. You could also maybe you could just like set a fire in someone's apartment, like put on you know a like something on the stove and just set it to go. Yeah. Hank fails. All right, Hank's of no use in this situation. <laughs> I don't know how to start a fire. I never was a part of the Boy Scouts. <laughs> I thought y'all um, knew how to start a fire. What's the idea here, guys? Let's. So we're in Michelle's apartment. Let's look around for some cooking oil. Uh, throw it in a pot, turn it on high, and walk away. I can attest that this is an extremely effective manner. <laughs> manner to burn something. <laughs> well, are you going to grab the the stuff that you were doing for the FBI and take it with you, or are you just going to let it burn in the apartment? Yeah, I'm not uh, sure about that. Is it just going to burn? Well, still, we got to give that to Marcus, right? Yeah, or not. We have the sh we have the Delta Green stuff, and but screw the FBI stuff. I mean, All right? Is it not gonna? Okay, wait. Benedict asked questions. Uh, is this not gonna raise eyebrows? Do we yeah. not need to hand that in? You think that the best way 
to satiate would probably be to satiate the FBI. And so taking it all yeah. with you and then like, oh my God, the house burned down after we got done searching. That's you. You all know that that's going to make this whole situation rife with conspiracy theories, but mm. it will be very hard to, to tell. Correct me if I'm wrong, but I thought the whole reason we were contacting Mark is to give him the FBI files. It's we basically to, co to, complete it's your, to complete your cover. So you can take the yeah. FBI stuff yeah. with you. Let's, let's, do, let's do it. Okay. Let's do that. All right. Is it a lot? Is it just like a box full of stuff? That's a probably, probably a few boxes. You can throw it in Hank's... Uh, you can throw into it in his Hank's, car. Uh, into his car. As you guys are... Uh, I imagine as you guys are doing this, like, you know, and then you go and you set the oil to burn. You know, you... Uh, you just faintly hear that, you know, like right as you guys are about to close the building as you're walking out, you hear that sound of like that 1920s, like music, like swing music playing mm -hmm. as you go to, uh, as you go to close the door. So long, we should, floors. We should it's observe from a distance in the car. It sounds like it's coming make... from Abigail's apartment. Oh. Yeah. Oh. Oh. <laughs> we have we have to check. Benedict goes to check. You see sitting on the ground is a record player. And there is a record sitting on it. And it is playing. Let me... oh, no, don't do it. Let me play something. I'm not the clicking. Uh, not the clicking. Here we go. I'm going to turn this up. Benedict of the whole failure of everything that they've been doing up until now and he just takes it off the needle. Wow. You can take that with you as you begin to smell smoke. No. He does not take it with him. <laughs> You're just gonna let it stay there? <laughs> Burn it all down. Alright. Actually, no, that's not right. Benedict would take the record. I don't think he'd take the record player, but maybe he'd take the album. He likes collecting keepsakes. And I think we would watch it burn. Mm-hmm. You see a soft orange flicker starting in Michelle's apartment through the window as it grows and grows and grows. You, you guys, you guys exit. You guys exit, you drive down the street a ways. You can find a place where, you know, you can still get a decent vantage. Um, yet, you're still far enough out of the way to actually, you know, be able to say that you weren't <laughs> right if they're on it. You watch the fire begin to grow. You see the light begin to expand inside Michelle Van Fitz's apartment. And after... 
a while, it seems that there's probably, you guys actually know that there is no connection. Um, one of the odd things was that there was, there was no electricity connection into the home, or into the apartment building. You guys, after a while, you imagine that someone probably, you know, who live nearby or, you know, a passerby reports the flames. And But by the time the fire department gets there, it's entirely too late. The conflagration is complete basically by the time they get there and it's everything they can do just to keep the blaze from spreading to nearby buildings you guys watch and wait uh, eventually some police start to show up as well and you kind of take that as your your opportunity <laughs> to uh time to go get going and yeah, to get the hell out of here um the next day you meet uh Marcus gets a hold of you, you pages you all early in the morning, tells you to meet him at the FBI field office where he, uh, you know, you all walk in with FBI windbreakers on and your fake FBI credentials and you hand off everything that you found to the FBI team. Um, we there would have some... had a huddle before this just to get our story straight. Yes, yes, and Marcus, you know, said it was all out and, you know, you guys are pulled in by the FBI. Um, to ask you, you know, did you see anyone lurking around, you know, and and they're concerned that the public will think there was some type of cover-up. Um, and that's, but they seem to just be asking you, did you see anyone around? Did anyone come poking around? Uh, we're going to have to talk to that Detective Guiradanda, too. No one seems to think that you guys necessarily had anything to do with it. They just seem to want it to all go away, which is seems to make Har Marcus pretty happy. You guys end up back where all of this started. Uh, you end up back at uh, what was what, what what was that park? Washington Square. Washington park, Square maybe? Park. Yeah, you guys end back Washington Square Park, sitting on the same bench where you started. And Marcus, tells well, you, boys, another job well done. <laughs> Marcus just shakes. This is his fuck. Marcus shakes this is his our first head. job. Yeah. Marcus shakes his head. He's like, well, it looks like they're... I've got a, I've got an in with the uh, the NYFD, the fire department, with the fire with the arson investigator. And they said there were no bodies, which is weird. And they're still... Uh, so now they've got this other investigation of what happened to everybody else because there was no one in the building. So um, whatever you guys did, you, you got it done. And I'm... I'm glad it's over. Um, just to let you know, Benedict, those... Benedict knows it's not over. In his heart, he knows it's not over. I'm just going to let you know, the phone numbers that you've been calling me on, those aren't going to work anymore. Don't try to contact me. I just want to get away from this. I want to get far away from this. I, I pray to God that, that we don't have to see each other again. Benji reaches out to shake his hand. He he returns the shake. And then grabs his hand and whips a gas mask out of his trench coat and shoves <laughs> it on his face. Gives it on his face. <laughs> ah! <laughs> um, so Benji has that intrusive thought for just one moment as he's shaking Marcus's hand. Uh, <laughs> snaps out of it. Snaps it was out of a it. pleasure working with you, Marcus. And then he turns back to the other two. <laughs> and ma mouths no it wasn't Marcus walks away leaving the three of you here, and he tells you he says um, he says don't hang out too long uh, we want Marcus uh, and uh, same to you we hope to never see you again <laughs> nice what do you so you know whatever happens there in the park you know you guys eventually all go your separate ways you you walk away you go back to well, your maybe. lives oh, sorry no go ahead i don't know yeah i would have i would have probably tried to well, see if benji yeah. wanted to try and clean things up like uh, benji i know we brought up that there weren't any problems we told marcus there weren't any problems to deal with so to speak, but do we want to go and try and unpick that little slip-up that we had? 
I don't know what we can do other than go back to that cafe and just wait for that random girl to show up. Yeah, I think Hank sees this as like a complete failure since we didn't, not a complete failure, but definitely a failure since we didn't find Abigail. He wants to be, he says, uh, we'll just let the DG handle that. There's also the loose end of someone anonymously sending the earrings to the uh, owner of the building and you know, Abigail's father going into the bookstore with her. Um, that was refreshing his mind, but he's like, he's done with this whole thing. Yeah. All right. So, so let me ask then, Benedict, you, what does Benedict do that next day? What does Benedict do on Tuesday? He goes back to work. He goes back to work without Jeremy. There's a lot of questions <laughs> about what happened to Jeremy. People are people are wondering where where Jeremy go. You know what 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 do you tell them? He's like, oh, Jer- that slacking piece of shit. Is he not at work today? <laughs> nice. Well, playing dumb. Well, and then when you're when you're alone in the evening, you know, and you remember that last time Jeremy made you a cup of tea and a sandwich, and you know, and you have to feed Marjorie yourself now. There's a, there are tears in private. There are many tears for Jeremy. What about Hank? What is a uh, what's Hank's, what's Hank's next few days look like? Is he, he heads back to the marshal's office? People ask you how working with the FBI was, you know, and that kind of thing. What is what does Hank do? Well, he's like you know, usual dead ends. Uh, same you always get with them. Happy to be back at the marshal's office. Um, mm-hmm. You know, goes just buries his head in whatever the next task is and tries to slightly repair his relationship with the oldest son. You know, oh, I wouldn't, phone call I wouldn't count on it. <laughs> <laughs> I think uh, John. He, he managed to, you forgot to return those books, didn't you, Hank? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, What's her name? Is it Kathy or whatever her Cindy. name is? <laughs> Cindy. Yeah, oh, the, that's a, the ledger. That, yeah, uh, what happens when you uh, do you ever hook back up with uh, Cindy? <laughs> Stroll down to evidence to say, uh, "Sorry, Cindy, it t- took a little bit longer on that case, but uh, oh no, it's totally fine." The... <laughs> <laughs> good to hear Boy, it. it uh, well, you know. Uh, be seeing you around the water, Kula. And he hands over the ledgers. What? 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 What do you? No! 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 <laughs> he just doesn't turn around. He just like he just keeps just walking. Oh my God. <laughs> So brutal. Oh, that doesn't feel good. Um, Ooh. what about Benji? What's, where's Benji go that next Tuesday? Once next uh, week. He teaches on Tuesday, so he'll go in and teach his class. Um, kind of zoned out, and he doesn't give as much pleasure from it as he normally does. I think the stress and the loss of insanity is kind of is like finally settling in after after he's had a chance to slow down and really internalize all the god awful horrors that they went through in the night floors. Yeah, and um, he'll come back home that evening and start working on a new manuscript. Uh, documenting everything that happened. Yeah, and it's going to be part of his real dissertation. Oh, uh, and then uh, he'll close his laptop and he'll go over to Alibaba on the couch and pet him and be like, "Oh, Ali, you would have loved him. He had the softest, fluffiest fur and the." <laughs> Biggest, brightest blue eyes and the and the floppiest tongue you've ever seen. Yeah. Are you uh? Do you guys happen to be watching the stream by chance? No. No. Okay. Um. So for the stream and uh, for you guys, I think you guys have seen this. Um. That next week, you are walking past one of the uh one of the many recording studios and uh someone comes out and they say uh hey 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 benji hey benji i got that uh i got that 
I I got that I got that uh that thing processed for you. Uh, what, uh yeah, that thing. Oh god. <laughs> that old oh, thing. Dude. Yeah, um I know what it is. Yeah, but here. I want to use it. Uh yeah, hey, do you want to come in and see it? Yeah. Walks in. <laughs> You walk in, and on the screen, yeah, there's a bunch of antiquated old um, audio equipment. And on the screen is a it's a picture, and there is a sound playing, and it's that sound on that record that you found. And for anyone watching the stream, this is what plays out. This repeated picture of this man with two children. A face that you recognize as Asa Darabondi. That's so creepy. That was a box original, not in the module. So not if you play module. this module, you're not going to get quality content like that. <laughs> um, so yeah. Uh, he gives it to you. He's like, <laughs> kind of weird, man. And he gives you a printout. <laughs> oh. Laura, you don't know the shit I've seen. <laughs> <on the gun. laughs> but yeah. Well, guys, it sounds like Hank, Benedict, and Benji go on to live their lives they go on they go from this operation they try to integrate everything that's weird happened you guys have had some massive bond damage um well some of you have lost bonds completely um and your sanity is not as good as it once was everyone go ahead and click that button at the bottom of their sheet to re-roll their stats uh for any stat increases you have but gentlemen my friends I believe we have completed the night floors. Mm. Ooh. All right. Man, I don't. It has been an like there's so absolute much we pleasure. That doesn't, doesn't feel complete. Is this going to circle back around in some way in this module? Like, it feels such like such a hollow victory. We didn't get any answers to anything. We got some, but we still don't know. The main so thing is, like, the demons, like, nothing came out of nowhere. We never found Abigail. Let's keep and in mind obviously... here that this operation... Pardon me. This operation is one of four. And that this is a part of one thing. So this right here, I'm going to show you this on, on screen. See that? See the smaller bit of book right here? Is that what we're through? Well, that's, that's not part of that is night floors. Everything that I have tagged is other stuff that's like background and stuff. There is, oh, gentlemen, there's a lot of book. There is a <laughs> lot of book left. <laughs> but that is the night floors. And so that's a um, chapter. Yeah. We completed a chapter. We completed our chapter. We know we took this to episode 13. And. Mm. You know, and you know, for anyone listening, we we've I've said it before. We were gonna play this no matter what. We were gonna play this no matter what. But I really, really hope that you have enjoyed Night Floors, the first the first chapter. We want to go all the way with this thing, like yeah, and play through the entire thing, and stream oh, yeah. it, and podcast it, because we are having a blast. Yeah, it's been great. Yeah. Well, do you guys have anything else to say before we uh before we go? And we will handle um the part of Delta Green is the between mission stuff. We'll handle that next time. We'll talk about it offline and kind of get some of that set up uh, for next time. But uh yeah, do you guys have anything else for us? Shout out to Steve. Uh, I look forward to uh, your telling us everything we did wrong. Get on that subreddit. <laughs> <laughs> Unload. Let us have it. Be merciless. <laughs> yeah, let there's something it. we. I'm sure we can so lose bench, but. Yeah. I think well, what I like is that I don't think there's a way to play this. There's like no perfect solution. 
That is the There's cool no... thing about Delta Green. Like, I recently saw a post that Dennis Detweiler had talked about where he said uh, he reposted someone asking on Reddit, "Are there missions where the the where the team makes things worse?" And the answer is, <laughs> and I think Dennis Detweiler's, who's one of the creators of Delta Green, by the way, for those listening, I believe his answer was. Uh, yes, any operation where the team participates is uh, <laughs> yeah. is worse. It it worse. Yeah. I feel but, like we did all right. It was a pretty clean resolution, and we didn't have to kill anybody. I think I think I, mean, sh- I think shoving everyone into the night floors, assuming that's where Roger Caroon and Lewis Post mm. actually were, mm. um, was a a way to get it done. Certainly. So yeah. Consequences like can't, this is this wait. is just consequences. Can't wait to see where it goes because waiting to happen. It's like, like kind we... of a somber end, and there's so many questions. Like I can't wait to see where it goes. Don't worry, yes. you got three more operations to figure it all the fuck out. Okay. Oh, <laughs> I'm bringing back uh, Liam, my old character from that first module you're in for the next chapter. Do you want? He's to? an absolute <laughs> machine. He's like autistic and good at everything <laughs> he's, he's, gonna get to change. he's also a psychopath <laughs> well right. is that the plan to like go to another character is that what you're supposed to do or? we'll talk about it a little bit offline um okay. but for now i want to thank everybody for man coming with us on this journey uh those of you watching the vod uh those of you on twitch and those of you listening in on the podcast whatever platform you are on Thank you for coming with us for the first chapter of Delta Green Possible Landscapes, The Night Floors. Join us next week. We're going to do our damnedest to get right back into this. There might be a bit of a mid-session, um, you know, or a set. our next session might be half of sorting out new characters and deciding what happens in between uh, operations and stuff. But either way, we're going to try to roll right into this thing next week so that we can get you guys we can just continue to deliver this shit show but hey if you like what you're hearing uh check out our reddit that's kind of our uh, the headquarters um that's r slash green box gaming no spaces um if you really like what you hear and you kind of want to hear more you want to support us being able to do things like get new microphones like i was able to do thank god um then consider going over to the Patreon. Uh, you get to hear the episodes a week early, and you know, and then you can catch up on. Tw- you can hit the Twitch stream and be up to date when we stream. But thank you guys for joining us. Thank you guys, the players, for playing, and we will see you next week for Chapter Two of Impossible Landscapes. Ooh. See you. See you Good later. Job, Jeff. <laughs> yes. Bye. And thank you, Handler. Thank you, Handler, and Steve, wherever he is. <laughs>